Hey guys, welcome to my vlog. This is Carol Blom One. Subscribe below. <laughs> Fun videos coming to you from quarantine every week. Today it's Catch with Alan. Let's go. <laughs> All right, it's so nice out today. The sun is beaming. I can't wait to play with my neighbor, Alan. Let me get my ball. <laughs> Alan, come out now. <laughs> Daily game of catch time. Hey Alan, how's your day going? Cool. Okay. Alan, you forgot to do your exercises. Okay, try again. Try again. That was a good try, Alan. Okay. Ready? Shoot, Alan. <laughs> Well, I guess our catch is gonna have to take a quick pause. Um, wasn't going well anyway. Alan hasn't been doing his exercises. Um, come back again tomorrow. What's up everyone? Pastor Lucas here, middle school ministry pastor at Westwood Community Church. Uh, joining, you, joining you today, obviously, from my apartment, my tiny little apartment where you can see everything. Um, we have no storage, so we, we got <laughs> our uh, bikes in the corner and my two cats fighting in the uh, corner of the screen. That's Breeze and Winona. I totally didn't mean to put them in there, but uh, they're there. Breeze, by the way, is named after Drew Breeze, the Saints, uh, or the quarterback of the Saints. Love that guy. Anyway, so those are my two cats. They'll be hanging out while, uh, while we hang out tonight. Hey, I am super excited that you're choosing to be with us tonight at Westwood Students Online. I think it's going to be just an amazing experience tonight, and God's going to move in incredible ways as we as we gather together to to worship together, to to learn together, and to just be together. So I'm excited to be together with you tonight. I hope you're excited to be together with me. Hey, we're doing something every week called the Student Spotlight, where we are asking two students each week, one middle schooler and one high schooler, to film themselves and share with us how their quarantine life is doing. Uh, specifically, answer two questions. One, um, what are they doing the past the time? Uh, what weird hobbies have they picked up? What movies are they watching? What books are they reading? What are they doing to pass the time? And number two, how is God moving their life right now? What's God speaking to them during this difficult season? So our two student spotlight students this week are seventh grader Natalie Vassar. What's up, girl? And the one and only, the amazing senior Jacob Rasmussen. So check out their videos. Hi guys, it's me, Natalie here. I hope you're all having a good week. My This past week has been kind of a struggle because my grandma was stage four cancer. It was going to take us on spring break to Florida, but that's not happening now. So I'm just kind of sad because this is usually the kind of time that we get to spend with her. I, I want to read you this verse. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. That last little bit that says plans to give you a hope and a future. He has a future for you and for me. I just hope you guys know that, okay? I will pray to God this week and ask him for comfort for all of us so that we can all be happy. I hope you have a good day. As, uh, I just wanted to let you guys know some things that I've been doing to focus on God during this time. And uh, number one is just staying connected to people. Uh, Digital devotionals, texting, FaceTimes are all great things to do to stay connected with your leaders and to ask questions, um, express your concerns. Obviously, it's a disappointing time right now for a lot of us, but just to have them to reassure us that God is so in control and that he has so much more in store for us after this is very, very powerful and beneficial. And I think that you guys should all uh, take part in that. Um, Obviously, it's a great time to be a light. So reaching out to people who may not know Jesus or who may have questions about what's going on, that's a great opportunity for you to um, just be a light and, uh, make a difference. Um, also some of my friends and I have been doing drive up worship nights at Westwood where we just drive our cars and, uh, park, stay distant, but, um, we're there together and worshiping the Lord together. And I think that that's a great opportunity for, for us to gather as a group and worship, but also just stay distant and stay wise about what's going on. So if you guys want to get involved in that, for sure, do it. It's a great time. Uh, also finally, just, uh, using this time to rest. I believe God has given us this time to rest and just step back from the crazy, busy life and um, focus on Him. Uh, 
reading scripture, praying are all good things to do right now. And I encourage you guys to do that. I know that God will speak to you through that. And um, yeah, I love you guys. Shout out to my seventh grade boys. I love you. Enjoy the message. Bye. Thanks so much, Natalie and Jacob, for sharing your awesome uh, words and stories with us tonight. We appreciate that. Hey, right now we're going to head into a time of worship led by David Booth. Uh, but before we do, I just want to share with you um, that one of the best worship experiences I ever had was when I was in high school. And I just remember I was just simply by myself in my room listening to my iPod. And I, I share that with you to tell you that um, sometimes we don't need a full band to give our full worship to God. Um, it comes from our hearts. And so as David is singing tonight, just really reflect on what he's singing, reflect on the words he's singing. And just remember that our worship is, is not about the worship of us or the worship of circumstances or how we feel, but it is the worship of our one and only God. And so my prayer is that uh, worship today just truly affects you and transforms you. After that, we're going to head into our message given by high school ministry director Matt Velasco. He's amazing. You all know that. He's actually starting a new series called The Unstoppable Church, where we're going to be looking at what the church is supposed to look like right now and how we can be unstoppable. But before we head into the message, let's enjoy some worship led by David Booth. Hey guys, welcome to students. I'm excited that I get to be here with you tonight. My name is David and um, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time singing some songs over you that have been impactful for me during this time. This first one's called Seasons. Like a frost on a rose Winter comes for us all Oh, how nature acquaints us With the nature of patience Like a seed in the snow I've been buried to grow For your promises, oh, you from sea to sea, call you. And I know, though the winter is long, even richer, the harvest it brings. Though my waiting prolongs, even greater. Your promise to me like a seed I believe that my season will come Oh, Lord, I think of your love Like the low winter sun as I gaze, I am blinded in the light of your brightness. Like a fire to the snow, I'm renewed by your warmth. Melt the ice of this wild soul. To the bearing is beautiful. I know, though the winter is long, even richer, the harvest it brings. Though my waiting prolongs even greater, your promise for me like a seed I believe that my season will come I can see the promise I can see the future You drift out of seasons I'm just seeing the winter All I know is harvest that is worth my patience You're not done working God, I'm not done waiting 
You can see my promise Even in the winter You're the God of greatness Even in a manger All I know of seasons Is that you take your time Could've saved a second Instead you said a child Though the winter is long Even richer The harvest it brings Though my waiting prolongs Even greater Your promise for me Like a seed I believe that my season will come God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, he spoke to the dark, fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, A hundred billion galaxies are born In the vapor of your breath the planets form If the stars are made to worship so will I God of your promise you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. But once you have spoken, nature and science follow the sound of your own voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath Evolving in pursuit of what you say If creation still obeys you, so will I If the stars are made to worship, so will I if the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roll your greatness, so will I. But if everything exists to live too high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. Cry out in silence, so will I. If the sun of all our praise ain't still for shy, then we'll sing again a hundred billion times. God of salvation, you chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created Light of the world Abandoned in darkness to die And as you speak A hundred billion failures disappear when lost you have so I could find it 
If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see you on in everything done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose to surrender, so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times What measure could amount to your desire You're the one who never leaves the one behind God, we thank you so much for the season that you've put us in. No, it may not be hard, it may not be easy at times. Lord, we know that you've placed us here for a reason. Would you give each and every one of us the wisdom to see what you have in store for us? And will we all cling to the hope that you give us on your cross? We thank you for all that you're doing. We all said, amen. What's up, friends? Matt Velasco here. I'm the high school ministry director over at the Chanhassen campus. So if you're from Bush Lake, so nice to meet you. If you're a middle schooler, so nice to meet you. Really excited that uh, I get to talk to you tonight over the interwebs, online, digitally, on YouTube, wherever you are watching. Uh, I want you to know one thing. And this might be um, um, one of the most important things I say to you tonight. Uh, and that's just that I love you. Honestly, I really, I really truly love you and I really truly miss you and I don't know about you, but I'm an introvert and so this whole social quarantine thing isn't that bad. I haven't showered yet today, if I'm being honest. I haven't brushed my teeth yet today. I haven't shaved in like a week. I know you can't really tell. Uh, it's really ugly. Somehow my fiance still loves me. It makes no sense sometimes when I look at my face, but regardless, I'm just so happy to be here. But this actually, it's kind of been fun. For me, maybe it's been fun for you. Maybe it's been hard for you, right? I want to just off the get-go recognize the difficulty of the situation that we are in. I mean, um, you might be lonely. You might be tired. You might be sick and you're worried whether or not you have coronavirus. You might be anxious. Um, maybe you're having fun. Maybe you're an introvert and this is heaven for you. You've already read all of Harry Potter, all of the Lord of the Rings, all of Hunger Games, whatever it might be. You've already read all of it. Um, and you're just having the time of your life wherever you land on the spectrum. So glad that you've tuned in with us tonight. We're going to be starting a new series called Unstoppable Church. And something that I've been talking to our high school ministry leaders about this week is this phrase, this motto that is kind of my personal motto and our high school ministry leader motto. And, and I want it to be your motto too, whether you are a sixth grader or a 12th grader during this quarantine period, during this unprecedented time. And that's this, ministry never stops. Right, I want you to repeat that after me. Ready? Three, two, one. Ministry never stops. And if you didn't do it, I'm going to give you one more shot. Three, two, one. Ministry never stops stops. And it's so important that we recognize the fact that ministry never stops. Even if you're stuck at home, you can still have an impact in your school. Even if you're stuck at home, you can still tell your friends about Jesus. Pick up the phone, call them, Snapchat them, FaceTime them, text them, get on Discord and play Fortnite or Apex Legends or Call of Duty Warzone with them. And if you play Call of Duty Warzone, um, let me know. In fact, I'm going to put my, my, uh, my, my battle.net, I play a PC, I'm going to put my battle.net info right up there. Add me as a friend and I will play Call of Duty Warzone with you. But seriously, take this as an opportunity to do ministry because ministry never stops. And, and that's what the Unstoppable Church is all about. You know, COVID-19, coronavirus, nothing is ever going to stop the Church of Jesus Christ. Nothing is ever going to stop the, the, the church of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to pray for us real quick, and then I'm going to get into really the meat of this message tonight. It's going to be quick, and then y'all are going to head into small group. So pray with me. Lord, we are so, so, so thankful, so glad that we get to gather. 
Lord, we don't know what's ahead of us. We know it's hard. We know this might be scary. It's unprecedented. But Lord, the church is unstoppable. Ministry never stops. And Lord, we are so thankful for that truth. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the gospel. Be with us, Jesus. Give us peace. Heal our land. And we will stand in awe of what you do. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. And we praise things in your name. Amen. Hey, if you have your Bibles, you can open them up. We're going to be reading from Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42, all the way to verse 47. It's going to be a powerful scripture for us to read. I'm going to give you just a couple of moments to turn to that. It might be awkward silence. I'm going to drink from my throat coat. One more. It says this, starting in verse 42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the process or the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending to the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with gladness and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Tonight I want to talk to you about a big word. This big word is ecclesiology. I want to spell that for you. It's E C C L E S I O. What I say? E C C. Hold on. E C. Oh, wow. E C C L E S I O L O G Y. Ecclesiology. One more time. That's E C C L E S I O L O G Y. Ecclesiology, and that's a big theological word. If you're a high school student, you've heard me talk about it before. If you are an eighth grader in upper room, you've heard this by now. And what that means is just simply the study of churches, the study of the church, the theology of who the church is, and really just a practical lesson of what that is. And this is actually what's talked about right here is the two C churches. The first one, you may have heard this before, is a lower C, lowercase c church. Right, this is the gathering of Christians in a physical place. That's the lower C church, the gathering of Christians in a physical place. And then there's the big C church, which is simply God's people, the spiritual body of Christ. In fact, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 simply says, Now you are the body of Christ, and you are individually members of it. And so the little C church is the physical churches in which we meet, the physical gatherings. See, we don't have that right now. We don't. We're missing it. I miss it. I want it. My soul wants it. But friends, we still have the capital C Church, which is the spiritual body of Christ. Like 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 says, each individually members of that church. And when we talk about the unstoppable church, we are simply saying that no virus, no disease, no outbreak, no trauma, no nothing can stop the church of Jesus Christ, the capital C church. And I want that simply to just be an encouragement to you. Because you are a part of a body of Christ that is unstoppable. Now the question becomes, how do we be that church while quarantined? How do we be that church while here? And I just want to offer a couple of practical things for you as I scroll down on my notes in front of me. And that's what we see in verse, uh, verse 47 of what we just read. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. In verse 20, 46, the one before, and day by day. Day by day, underline that, day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. I want to pull out three words from that. The first one is daily. See, the church gathered daily. And friends, I don't know if you know this, but you can still gather as the church daily. 
You can still FaceTime your friends. You can still Zoom them. You can still Google Hangout with them. I would encourage you, start a Bible study over FaceTime. Start a Bible study over Google Hangouts. Gather with the church, your people, your small group, whoever it might be, daily. And the Lord will bless you. Do not neglect the gathering of the saints, Hebrews says. It says, do not neglect the gathering of the saints. Do not ignore coming together. And friends, while we can't do it physically, we can still do it spiritually. And the second one is gladly. You know, in a season like this, I know we keep saying it's a season. It's so hard not to. But in a season like this, man, be glad. I know it's so hard, but you know what's still true? Like, I don't know if you know this, but you want to know what is still true despite COVID-19, despite coronavirus. What is still true is the fact that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came down and lived a perfect life from heaven. He came down, didn't sin once, lived a perfect life, died a death that we could not die, and then rose again so that we could have a life that we could not have. See, the gospel of Jesus Christ, this good news is still good, even if all the news out there is bad. Even if you turn on Fox News, CNN, uh, NBC, ABC, CBS, whatever news it might be, even if you turn it on and all you see is bad news, man, the gospel of Jesus Christ is still good. So know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is still good. And in the realization of the goodness of the gospel, would gladness come out of your heart? Gladness for who Jesus is, for who the Holy Spirit is, for who the Father is. You know, all theology, all scripture, it is still true in the midst of all the mess out there. Of all the stuff out there. And the third thing is worshipfully. See, one thing that our high school students have been doing that I'm so proud of that I love is they've been gathering with social distance and they've been worshiping. Man, don't let this stop your worship. Our friends over at River Valley just came out with an amazing new song. Turn it on and worship to it, right? Put on some Hillsong, put on whoever you want to listen to and spend time in worship. Maybe you put together a playlist and you call your friends and you say, on the count of three, everyone press play and you sing together over the phone. It sounds weird, but let me tell you, the Lord will bless that. The Lord will be good to you. The Lord will be there. He will be worshipped. So think of creative ways to worship together. Those three things, again, were daily, gladly, and worshipfully. So how do we be the church during quarantine? We gather daily, even if it's digitally. We are glad because the gospel is still good. And we worship because God deserves it. Friends, I love you so much. It's been such a privilege to be able to be with you tonight. Go on to small groups. I think Lucas is going to hop on here for one last time and, and say a quick message for you. But I love all of you. Have a great night. Matt, thanks so much for that awesome and, and challenging and really relevant message and reminder for us tonight that, that we can be the unstoppable church and how we gather right now and that we're not going to let sickness or fear or a lack of a building, uh, keep us from from doing church together and from doing life together. Hey, speaking of doing life together, we're going to head into our online small groups right now, which is uh, just super fun opportunity for you to connect and engage with your small group. If you are watching right now and you are not a part of a small group or you either haven't contacted you yet, please email me right now at this moment at lucas.williams at westwoodcc.org. That's lucas.williams at westwoodcc.org, and I will get you connected right away tonight to a small group. Hey, thanks for joining us at Westwood Students Online tonight. I hope small group time is amazing. hope the rest of your week is great, and we will see you next Wednesday.